Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Alrighty then. We have a video class where um, we can use it to spin off video objects where each video object represents one row in the video table. So now we need a video service class. And again, that'll go in the data folder because we're concerned about data here. So add class to the data folder and we'll name this one video service. And the services it provides are things that allow you to like insert table rows, read table rows, update table rows, delete table rows. In other words, all the CRUD stuff. All right, so in the video service.cs class, first thing we'll do is we'll um, define our connection string because all the different methods in here that do the actual database operations have to know where this database is. So we'll just type that up real quick here as uh, declare a public video service, um, SQL connection configuration. Uh, I should be underscore configuration. What do I got going on here? Configuration without the underscore. And we will get that underscore configuration. All right, and so that'll be the basically the connection for all the different methods in this class that do database operations. All right, let's start by adding a method that will insert a database record or create in the CRUD language. So I'll just put a comment in for starters so you know what this refers to in the future. The C in CRUD stands for create though in SQL it actually implies an insert statement where you're inserting new data into the table. Okay, we need a method. We're going to use the task-based asynchronous pattern. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, that's going to be public async task, and then it's going to return a bool, which will be true after the uh, row has been um, successfully inserted. We'll call this method video insert because it's going to insert one video object into the table. And then inside this method, we'll set up a little using block that connects to the database and inserts the row. So we'll say using, and then we'll uh, give it a name var con, con was just a variable name for the connection, equals new SQL connection. I'm not getting the right uh, IntelliSense support. Ah, got to come up to the top here. We're using those two imported packages, Dapper and Microsoft.data.sql client. So you need to add usings for those two, .data.sql client. And also, we're probably going to also need um, system.data. Doesn't really matter if you put that. I'll just stick it here, system.data. All right. And then we'll go back down to our method and see if we can finish that out. All right, so the using then is varcon equal new SQL connection, open print underscore configuration dot value with a capital V. And now we can say var parameters equal new dynamic parameters, and that's a dapper thing. So if you didn't have the using dapper up there, this wouldn't work. And now we need a parameter for each value being passed in as the insert. Um, we don't need the ID because that's automatic on an insert, but we do need the video title and the other information. So we'll say parameters.add. The parameter name in video service, which is title with a capital T, what we're using, which is video.title, and that will be DB type string. And then we'll copy that and make another one. We'll say parameters.add date published. I think that's the second field. Date published, and that's going to be video.date published, not title. And it's not a string. The DB type is date for that. And then for the last one, it'll be is active. That'll be video.isActive. And its DB type is, even though we say bit when we're, you know, in inside the table, it's Boolean in this in this code. All right. So, oop, that's is active with a capital A. Now you can either just type up your SQL statement for the insert, 
or um, I tend to make a lot of mistakes if I do it that way. So sometimes I'll just run out to SQL Server Management Studio, open up that uh, database you're working with, right click the uh, database name and choose new query right click that workspace and choose uh, design query and editor and then from there you can just um, pick your table your fields and do it that way all right this will be an insert values type of insert and i can just copy that down to here and change those to parameter names and uh, all right maybe i could have typed it up quicker but again, I'm just using this method because uh, you're less likely to mistype a field name or something if you do it that way. So I'll just uh, then copy paste this into my code. Now this is going to be a string. We'll make it a constant, say const string, and then just give it a name. We'll call it query. It could be anything. All right. And um, set that to equal at quote, quote, and then just drop your SQL right in there. Okay, and we need a semicolon at the end of that. And then we need to execute that SQL statement. And to do that with Dapper, we're gonna say await con, which is the connection string, execute async, and then follow that with parens, um, the name of the string query that contains the SQL. All right, so execute that query string. And then we need a new and then video dot title video dot date published okay the stuff that's being passed in as parameters are going to be uh, fed in for the title and date published and is active to be placed in the database table okay and then we just need a oh yeah command type with a lowercase c colon and then it's going to be a command type with an uppercase C. And that's a dot text to indicate that you're going to be executing a chunk of text as this SQL. And that chunk of text is that string we created named query in the line above. And that should do the trick for that part of it. And next we'll create an iVideo service interface. And an easy way to do that is come up to the initial public class statement and right click that name choose quick actions and refactorings extract interface it'll suggest all that just click OK and now you see you have colon I video service here indicating that's the interface and if you look over in solution Explorer you see I video service CS is that file over there okay and it returns a boolean and I forgot to put that in my code that goes down just above the uh, closing curly for that method. Alrighty, let's go ahead and build it, see if it blows up there. Nope, build one succeeded. And what the heck, let's run it. And it still runs, so that's good. Um, let's see, anything else we need to do here? I don't think so, but this little method right here that does the insert, basically from here on out, you're gonna create one of these for each CRUD operation, create, update, and so forth. But for now, mission accomplished so far, so let's go ahead and close and save everything up, and we will forge on ahead in the next lesson.